Hi everyone, I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 7, Episode 2. The show starts off with Claudia going to the doctor about her feet. It's just like she had trouble with her feet since she was younger. She was an athlete, and in two, her feet are no longer pretty. So I was expecting like the worst foot in like all of the existence of the world, but she just had like a few corns and a few bunions. Yes, it looked bad, but the way she said her feet looks is like mountains and mountains of corns, bunions nastiness hair popping out of it it just looking very it looked nasty but it didn't look as bad as i had imagined because i always go for the words when somebody said me something i just am automatically i overdo it with my thinking and i always think the very 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 worst but you know her feet were bad but you know they weren't as bad as they were and she has kenya there for sport which kenya was None of that. She, oh my goodness, look at your feet. Doctor, you really gonna touch your feet? Put some gloves on. Girl, your feet is the worst feet I've ever seen in all of existence. I think you should go into the Guinness Book of World Records and the worst feet in the world. Like, oh my goodness, it's like Kenya. You was supposed to be there for your friend to support her, not to dog her feet. She know her feet is bad. She said that many times. You were supposed to be there for support. And the doctor said, okay, you know, we can't, you know, get rid of these cords and bunions, you know, in there, you know, just right down. You had to have surgery. But they're not, she, like, they're going out to try to Puerto Rico for Claudia, not Claudia, but Demetria's, you know, performance. And she want to look cute. And she not going to be looking cute on the beach with surgical shoes on. So she going to wait till they get back. So Kenya's looking for an assistant, so she goes to the Bailey Agency where Cynthia, she's in the middle of a meeting. And this part threw me off, and y'all tell me because as soon as you walked in the door, they were having a meeting like right there. It wasn't like in the back area or in her office or an area, you know, designated for meetings. It was like as soon as you walk in, they were at a table having a meeting. And I was like... Something about that just threw me off. I was like, you know, anybody just come in on y'all meetings, i.e. Kenya. But anyways, Kenya's there because she needs an assistant. And I guess Cynthia is the only person she could go to. Anyways, so Cynthia has to ask her assistant, okay, I'm going to need you to help her find an assistant. He was like, okay, maybe three or four. And Kenya's like, um, three or four, um, you think you're going to find three or four people that can, you know, live up to my standards? They're going to have to be at my back and call 24-7. They are going to be, you know, comfortable with flying since I'm always flying all around the world. They need to know when I'm hungry and thirsty before I know when I'm hungry and thirsty. And Cynthia was like in her confessional, just like, dang, Michelle Obama don't even have all those requirements and she's the president's wife and she'd really be doing something. That was just a little bit of slight shade, but I was feeling her on now. I was like, I don't know what Kenya's is doing at this moment. I know she's trying to get back into the, you know, movie and television business, but she said that person has to be inclined to that too. So I don't know exactly what she needs or where she needs assistance like that, but she needs an assistant and she's going to Cynthia, you know, via way her assistant to find her an assistant. So, Nene and Phaedra, they head over to Demetrius' studio session, and Nene gets there first, and Demetrius, she's singing, doing good news, like, you got a really good voice, you know, some of these girls on here, they be saying they can sing, and they can't sing worth a lick, I heard a few, but we're not going to get into that right now, but get Demetrius, girl, you did real good, Phaedra comes in, and I don't know, Phaedra, she was on one this episode, like, she was like, seriously giving Demetria the third degree. It's like, come on, Faye. It's like, leave this girl alone. She's like, okay. About that whole Roger Bob situation. She was like, yeah. She, Demetria said something that alluded to her character on House of Pain, which is Janine. And Janine was a crackhead. And, you know, Faye was like, had you ever done crack? And she was like, no. And even Nene at the point was like, dang, Faye, leave the girl alone. She got asking all these questions. Goodness, let the girl breathe. But she was like, uh, have you ever did crack? How long you been together? You sure this man really wants you? Y'all been together eight years, are you sure? And she's just like, question after question after question. Nene's whole problem was, 
with the matrix shit like you know I'm all for girl power you know what I am woman hear me roar no this is this is that kind of saying anyway you know I am woman hear me roar and she's like I wanted you to stay so that you can get to the bottom of this because you know you just went off and left and just took this girl's word for it you should stay ask questions took notes so when you got home to Roger Bob or when you see him again you can ask him hey do you know this girl name what whatever her name was do you know Smurfette can't remember the girl's name but I knew she had blue hair so for right now she's gonna be Smurfette and so I can remember her name do you remember do you know what Smurfette if so have you ever dated Smurfette and if so if you have dated her, when did you date her? And did it coincide with us dating? Because these are the things I'm going to need to know. Because I got blindsided at the Candy's little event. Which I think, you know, seeing as how Smurfette was Candy's friend. And Candy's doing this party about relationships. You would have think that, hey, Candy would have known that Smurfette and Roger Bobby dated. Because this your homegirl. This your friend. You know, you... You, you and your friend, you get a new man or something like that, and you know they really quick. Girl, guess who I'm dating? I'm dating such, 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 such. So, I am assuming that Candy already knew this and knew that the subject of who you in a relationship is going to come up, seeing as how they were talking about relationships. So, this whole Candy and her intro talking about something she's not about at all. She's not about all the drama and all the mess when she is totally about all the drama and all the mess. But anyways, then I forgot where I left off at. I got that rambling about candy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Uh, forgive me. She's like, yes, because I was in an event and I was blindsided because Smurfette said that y'all had dated. She asked me, you dated Roger Bob? Because I dated Roger Bob. Like, I'm in the wrong and I'm lying. So I'm going to need you to know, have you dated Smurfette? Because I was looking stupid over there. I'm over here defending you and, you know... And you didn't date it smart fit while you were dating me. This is what Nene she thought she should do. You know, get your information. You can talk to him and ask him himself. And if you wouldn't been in a relationship with somebody for a while, you can kind of tell when they lying or stretching the truth, stretching the truth. And I guess that's what Nene wanted her to do. And she's like, don't, don't go ask that man to marry you. You, um, you, you wait for him, him to marry you. Wait a minute. You wait for him to propose to you. Don't go out asking that man to marry him. And she's like, I don't see how he ain't figured out in all these eight years that he want to be with you. But, you know, Nina's like, that's y'all life and I'm not getting into it. So, the ladies arrive in Puerto Rico for, you know, this Bravo trip that, you know, trip that Bravo would have paid for. So, I'm sorry. This trip that Rod Roger Bob paid for in the path for Demetri for her to sing. Now... Y'all know every year they go somewhere. And it seems like the last few seasons they've just been like, oh, one of the girls in the group has decided to, you know, invite everybody to come on this all expense pay trip. Y'all know this is what they do every year. This is a Bravo sponsored trip. And just like um oh, back in the day, excuse me, when real world they would go on a trip somewhere. You know, I got the hiccups. Excuse me, y'all. You know, them kids on there wasn't paying for no trip. So, this is what they do. So, we just gonna let them try to convince us that Roger Bob paid for this trip for Demetri to have her session. So, when they get there, you know, Candace kind of asked her a question. Like, hey, girl, you know, how long are you going to be singing for? And she's like, 30 minutes. She's like, well, since I am musically inclined and I have been in this business for 20-some odd years, I don't think you should go out with your new songs. Yeah, if they don't know it, like, you know, go out there with some songs people know. She's like, oh, I'm going to do that. You know, I'll probably bring in one new song. But all the other songs were songs that I know. And then she was getting on how, you know, I felt some type of way about Phaedra because she was coming at me and slight shading me. And poor shit, Candy came to the consensus of, yeah, girl. It takes you a minute. You got to realize, like, hey, did she slight shade me right quick? And it was like, yeah, that's who Phaedra is. And, you know. You know, you got to get used to that and, you know, don't let it, you know, bother you. Of course, like, don't let it bother you because if it bothers you, she's going to keep on doing it. So, you got to come back to Phaedra and then it'll shut her down. So, it's like, okay. Then, um, Cynthia, Claudia, and Kenya arrive and, 
they going on and on and talking and whatever and at one point Sephora Kenya was talking about some she and they were, oh yeah Claudia was asking Kenya are these girls the kind of girls with jumping the pool and get their hair with she was like I have never seen any wet and I don't believe I've ever I don't even think she takes showers it's like Kenya's like acting like that I can see why she won't be shady at Nene because Nene's been shady at her but the thing is Kenya's been acting like she wanted to mend fences with Nene but then she always behind him his back throwing shade. But anyways, Claudia not Claudia, what's her name? Demetria meets up with Cynthia, Claudia and Kenya. And she's like, Yeah, y'all the fun girls and she's like, Yeah, I need to you know, I'll finish some talk or she wanted to tell them about the situation with Phaedra and Kenya's like, Yes. Phaedra's messing with somebody else where well, I can get this person on my side and we can team up on Phaedra. This is what I'm thinking. Maybe I went wrong who knows? This is Kenya we talk about. So she's like, I think you should say something. Yeah, you should say something and get this off your chest if this is how you feel. Everybody gets a room. Nene and Phaedra are the last ones getting in. Nene's like, you know, I'm not really tripping around the room long as it is clean and five stars. Until she gets in her room and she feels it's a closet. I didn't really like to set up the room because, like, your bed is right here and then, like, right next to it is like a glass and cave shower I was like you know you can get you can't have like a actual bathroom that's separating the room and the shower I guess that's how they go do it in Puerto Rico <coughs> so excuse me y'all getting the cold again my husband got me sick again it's like we keep on passing this dog on color back and forth to each other and now I am it but y'all probably didn't want to know that but anyways so this is the time they at lunch, and well, before that, let me get to this, cause Demetri, not Demetri, yeah, Demetri, she's upstairs getting her makeup done, and Nene and Phaedra come up there, they say hi, Nene say hi to everybody, nice to meet you, she's being very cordial, and yeah, Demetri, she has her a stylist and a makeup artist, I guess since she was gonna be coming there to do it, you know, show, she's gonna need them there, but right now they are there. To get her together for this dinner. But anyways, you know, Frazier, she over there being shady. It's like, oh, I see you got this one right. And the stylist was like, excuse you. He's like, yeah, I see that you got this outfit right because that outfit, that, that other outfit wasn't about right. She didn't say that, but that's what she was thinking. Because she went back and told Portia that. And Portia's like, girl, you can't be saying that to people. That is, mm -mm, that's just being shady. You need to stop. So we're going to get to this dinner. So everybody's sitting around talking. Nene ordered her, her drinks, and I think Portia and Frazier decided to order the same drink. You got your Kenya, Cynthia, and Claudia over there looking like, mm hmm. What are they going to have next on? Powder wigs next? Maybe they just wanted that drink too. How about that? It ain't got to be they following after Nene, because you know, Frazier, she's not a follower. She just do her thing. So. This is the time when Demetrius G decides that I need to confront Phaedra about what she said about me. And she was like, you know, Phaedra, we don't know each other and I would like us to know each other. But I think you came to me all the way wrong. You don't know about me or my relationship. And Phaedra's like, well, you the one always bringing it up. She's like, yes, I bring it up. If I bring it up, you feel free to talk about it. But, you know, you going behind my back, that ain't cute, you know, boo-boo. The only thing we have in common is the number eight, meaning... My my man's been here for eight, and yours is leaving for eight. And Chad, when she said that, I about fell out. I almost fell out the couch. And she said, "I was like, oh, we we're bringing out the claws now." And Phaedra was like, "Okay, has he has he been here for eight straight years?" And she was like, "Dimitri said something to the effect of, no, it hasn't been eight straight straight years, but you know." Where do you, the way your man's going, it ain't gonna be eight straight years for you. She said something like that, but she was, you know, giving them back to Phaedra. And then I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I guess Dimitri, Dimitri, she did her homework, she studied, and she was like, yes, I'm going to be on this show. I am going to know how to read. Like, I am a teenage girl in 2008 when the new Twilight books came out. I am going to know how to throw shade. Like, I am the biggest tree in the world. Yes, I am on here and I'm ready to do it. And I'm sitting there like, oh, snap. And I'm like laughing, ready to fall back. Because I was like, I did not expect it. Well, I know I seen it on the previous last week. But like last week. But I was like, oh, my goodness. Dang. So, no, Faith is like, oh, my goodness. And Nene, she's over at Cacklin. And I guess this is when Claudia, she didn't have her a few drinks. where she needed to 
chime in like this is so childish yada 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 at one point she was talking about how needy's old and she was like chad we ain't but a few years apart i'm in my 40s and so are you and claudia's like no you were 20 years older than me i guess she thinks that he's in her 60s i guess she was like yes 20 years ago when you had edges that's the age i am right now i was like dang she's talking about needy's edges which you know your edges messed up if you always wearing wigs and you not you know if you always binding them down of course you're gonna lose your edges you can lose your edges wearing too many braids. You can lose your edges having, you know, um, doing too many styles when you pull them on your edges. So, this point is like, uh, what's name? I cannot get Claudia's name right. Claudia, she is throwing shade after shade. And Nene, at one point, she's like, you know what? I ain't got time to talk to you. You a whore. You gonna say with every time Dick and Harry and Paul and Paul's daddy in Hollywood, yo, doggone vagina been rolled more than I don't know what. So this is what Nene's giving back. I guess Nene, she didn't got kind of like taken aback, like, dang, somebody's coming back for me. And Cynthia's like, yes, this is what called it's called Nene getting red. And, and that's how to show it. So yes, if I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment or video response. And like I always, I don't thank my subscribers and the people who watch my videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.